Uh, thanks, Tim. And uh, yeah, in this session, I will, I will give an introduction on the data plan virtualization enhancements, which towards the NFE. So we, we uh, now uh, hear that we have our NFE submit. So DBTK around, uh, DBTK is the key uh, facility that to build either the virtual appliance and the uh, NFE I. So today my topic will around this and uh, what's in, uh, coming in the uh, next few releases and what we are doing in the next few releases. And uh, yeah, uh, of course, um, I'm Steve and uh, from Intel and the platform solution architect for DBDK. Yeah, the agenda is quite simple today and uh, uh, I will go through the status quarter and uh, the future. Uh, so the main uh, two main parts for to support NFE one is the, the single root IOV mode, which is why it's part in the uh, in DBDK now. Almost all the PMD have that mode. Another piece is uh, Volt IO, and uh, uh, we are working in a few years and uh, keeping on Volt IO to make it better and, uh, uh, and no matter improve the performance or make the usability. That I will go through these two parts. And uh, then I will give a summary of the key take uh, uh, from today's topic. Yeah, F uh, first piece, yeah, single root IOV. Okay, he here is a high level picture about how uh, and uh, what's the scenario DBK have support in, uh, in current days. So we have seen that uh, we can either run, uh, use DBDK in the uh, VM actually to run the virtual appliance in uh, VFPMD and also that we are now support the container so you can have a DBDK home driver running container on host. And uh, yeah, uh, what we say is okay, in the single root IV pass through mode that control plane is passed through to the, to the guest and the partial of the PCI config space has been directly mapped to, from the hardware. And the, the, uh, the working progress uh, uh, engineering work is trying to make more uh, user friendly and uh, improve their usability. So how to do that? So the first piece is that we are seeing the gaps uh, under uh, SRV, which is from generation to generation, the VF driver is not so compatible. So if you have a stock VM and with a new hardware, actually without modification, which means you, if you don't have a VF driver uh, modified, you can support new, uh, new, new, new hardware. So that is one piece that we are going to address in the next few releases, which is provide a single VF driver which can work for the all generation of the uh, devices. That, uh, that is not, uh, that is a hardware, in, uh, hardware dependent. So we are just saying, okay, we are trying to get uh, Intel next to have this mode uh, works. And uh, uh, in terms of the usability, so there's another working progress one, which is uh, uh, to make a uh, more user-friendly line migration. So today, uh, DBDK mode under, uh, to support the SRV line migration is actually you have a bonding driver, which can uh, uh, bind the, the uh, uh, SRV VF, dri uh, VF driver and also with a volatile. So on the, during migration, actually the migration comes from the road IO. So you uh, unplug the device and uh, replug it again uh, on the destination side. So the device attached detached API is there, and but that is so uh, very proactive hard plug. So uh, but in fact, or in the real case that we actually uh, uh, even driven uh, approach. So. We have a few, uh, we have two actually, the features in the coming releases. One is the hot plugin notification, which allows DBDK to aware of the assistant level events from the, uh, for, from the OS. And then um, by taking this event that you can have a fail, uh, say pro, uh, PMD, which can uh, on the link, link level to replace the secondary in, uh, interface so that you can make the uh, virtual appliance be transparent about that uh, uh, actions. So that is the one to improve the usability. And yeah, the next, and uh, the, the next one, uh, which is not uh, exposed in the release uh, roadmap yet, that is the one which I said to improve their usability. So provide a single VF driver for the current and next generation uh, of their uh, NIC. So uh, as the diagram shows that you can have stock VMs, uh, and the, the, uh, 
oh, okay, um, you, you can have the AVF driver, uh, the AVF, uh, the full name is adaptive virtual function. So the VF driver always being uh, consistent in the VM, and uh, in the whole side that uh, from generation one to generation three, that the hardware is essentially is, uh, is different, but you can have using, always using the AVF driver in the, uh, in the VM to, uh, to drive this uh, VF functions. And so it has a base mode, so we keep a, a small set of the feature in the VF, so you will always have a single device ID, so no matter the new uh, generation devices you have, the, uh, the uh, uh, device ID for that AVF uh, is always to be the same. And so you, you will always have the host, uh, host interface uh, state list offload, so the checksum and the TS offload will be in there. And uh, you, of course, will have the multi queue support for that virtual function, and the artist is always be there. So that's the uh, that comes to the come up, comes up to the basic mode we, we will support in the uh, VF. So people will ask, uh, okay, if you keep that set of the uh, function in the VF, what about the new features in the new hardware? So that uh, so AVF will be proposed as a spec, so it, it can be extended by uh, by by feature and by future hardware. But that new features, which is not in the small set of, uh, in, not in that small set, won't be uh, consistent in the in the in the uh, new VF drivers. So here we are saying, okay, if you always focus and keep using the small uh, feature set, you will have the uh, drivers in the VM being consistent. So that that one is planned in in, in this year uh, Q, Q3 and uh, Q2. Okay, yeah. Then the next is uh, Votile. Um, here, uh, first also we go to the high level uh, picture, the diagram of uh, what we have today in DBDK. Okay, on, on the VM side that we have DBDK support PMD, Votile PMD in the, in the guest. So uh, for, for uh, long years and uh, under, uh, so not only the PMD runs there, also you can support Volio NAT in the guest and have the DBDK to support the backend. So you can build uh, whatever vSwitch that, uh, uh, which use the DBDK vhost user library to, uh, to, to as the uh, vPort to connect with the VM. And on another side, in the 17, start from the 1702 that we uh, support our Volio interface on the container side, so now you can also run a PMD, what a PMD in the container that you connect with the backend the vhost user to the switch again. So uh, under under a software interface point of view, no matter the uh, virtual plans running in a VM or running in a container, that the uh, API the PMD are uh, always be consistent, which based on what I PMD. The only difference, slightly difference, is that in the VM side you have our PCIe uh, transport. Uh, layer that 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 is our uh, volatile PCIe device. Actually, on the container side, you you just are used the DBDK virtual device. That's the only uh, difference for that. And uh, uh, in another part is that there, uh, if you are going to run the legacy application in container and still uh, using a user space uh, switch, which built by DBDK, the, uh, we provide our, uh, another uh, we provide a way. A switch that we, you can you can hook up the traffic by vhostnet, which uh, located in kernel and directly to our uh, virtual user uh, provided by DBDK. So so in that way, so you, you can have the virtual switch built by DBDK and the talk with the legacy or uh, virtual plans built by DBDK from the container. So that that piece will be uh, uh, will will go through by Jenfeng in in today's uh, the last session in today's morning. So yeah, that, that's the current status for, for DBDK to support Volio uh, uh, in both VM and container. And uh, if we're looking at how we do that, how to uh, support uh, the single PMD, Volio PMT to support both VM and the container uh, be, uh, consistently, which is that, okay, today we have Volio uh, PMD, which is our either dev. And there, in the in the low layer, that actually we have our volatile PCIe implementation is also have our volatile user uh, adapter. So for the PCIe side, that domain is uh, is going to support VM. So you uh, essentially has the 
emulated Rotile device by Qmu, and there are uh, Rotile user adapters inside Qmu, so you can uh, uh, try uh, build a connection, build a session with the uh, backend uh, in, in, uh, by using the Qmu uh, adapter. But on the other side, if you don't have an emulated device, you can have DBDK there, so DBDK provide that adapter. So you keep using Rotile and uh, building the session with the backend by that adapter. That's the key point that we you can using that adapter to uh, in your v uh, in your container or in your bare metal uh, uh, processor to directly talk with the backend. So in that way that you are using the Rotile ring as a generic shared memory ring, and uh, uh, each side producer or consumer can be uh, used either on Rotile side or Reho side. That's the way we are doing in in DBDK. And uh, we said we, we spent a few years to improve the uh, Rotile in user space, uh, no, no matter on the front end and back end. Now the time goes to uh, 2017. And uh, what we are doing and uh, what we will, uh, we will do is that uh, in, in today's uh, session that I will go through the GRO, GSO parts, I will go through the generic VHost user, and uh, that is the working progress, which is in the 1708 time frame or 1711. And there's another two uh, is coming, which is the uh, hardware acceleration for the Vodile. Another one is the new spec for Vodile 1.1. What's our progress and what we are doing? Yeah. Um, the first one we are working progress is to, uh, to make VHOS user library more generic. So we have said in the NFVI uh, piece that not only there's network, but also has storage and uh, computing and uh, some acceleration. So um, we are going to address the uh, storage networking and also uh, for the crypto uh, compression, oh, sorry, uh, crypto. And so we do a little bit of the refactoring on the VHost library. So here we say, um, uh, th there's a new device type actually working on the Volile 1.1, which is our Volile crypto device. And the, the SCSI devices are uh, already been there for a few years. So we take uh, this and uh, so adding the uh, VHOS proxy in the QMU so to allow to set up the session with backend by, by the crypto and by the SCSI. And uh, on the uh, vhost uh, on the DBK vhost user library side, we are going to uh, have the we are going to have the vhost uh, uh, targets, crypto targets, the SCSI targets in the vhost user library side. So we are we will uh, make the uh, that library more generic. So uh, decouple the ring part with the function part. So you can have the uh, InQDQ still being the library, but you can build uh, uh, build on the uh, SCSI or crypto uh, request response and uh, to build our targets and using leverage that library. So the use case for that is uh, on storage side is that we, we uh, Intel has another uh, open source pr um, pr uh, project which is SPDK storage uh, for storage. So. It's, SPDK can use this uh, backend and build the application actually to drive the user space NVMe driver. So in that way that your guest application can uh, leverage the host or hardware to, uh, uh, to, to, uh, to access their storage device directly. And on the crypto side that we are, go uh, uh, we are going to, uh, actually you can build the service daemon a crypto service demo uh, by using that library to uh, access uh, your hardware acceleration. And uh, on the software side, that uh, the VHOS library API is quite generic. So you, you have that semantics to inQ and DQ message from the guest. Yeah, that is the one. So for the SCSI side, uh, uh, the uh, code is already uh, being upstream, uh, uh, sorry, it is already uh, uh, sent out and waiting for the merge in the in the QMU. and uh, on the SCSI target side, the code is already be open side open sourced, and the Volta Crypto we are working progress and uh, in the uh, one dollar one spec, uh, that is a spec community is talking about that new devices, and uh, in the DBK side we are working on the prototype uh, for for that. Okay, that's the update for the uh, generic VHOS through the library. 
and then second one. Second one is GRO GSO support. So yeah, for, first, what is what uh, what is it? So GSO uh, is that you uh, the uh, essentially you, you have a uh, large packet, but in the network you can't transmit so large packet, so you have to make it be a small one. So uh, a few hardware actually support this function, but not a lot, uh, full of them have that. So GSO is a software approach that to uh, dis uh, disassemble the packet into small one, and uh, in the reverse, that uh, GRO is assemble assemble the packet segments and uh, purely by software. So there's uh, all software libraries, and why we need this is that. In order to reduce the overhead by either, uh, either your stack or some uh, pipeline, packet process pipeline, uh, what's the best way is that you keep the single packet, which is large, in your pipeline, and only to disassemble it or uh, disassemble it in the last time, uh, in, in the last step, you are going to the wire line. And uh, in the reverse of that, if you get a few small packet, as you order to reduce the overhead. So the best way is to, to assemble it first to a bigger one and then deliver it to your pipeline or your, or your stack. So that uh, your pipeline and the stack is uh, handled the packet, uh, packet way. So a huge number of packet is not, not helpful to, to uh, your pipeline or, or your stack. So that's the idea that you, you need to go to this way. And uh, uh, essentially, so uh, in, uh, directly that we all see the benefits from to the to the vSwitch. So um, that is the major motivation that we are going to support it. But in, in, the, in the same time, that it's not only limited on the uh, uh, vSwitch support. So it will also benefit to all of the user space stacks. Yeah, that's the one we are working progress. Yeah, and this is the third one, uh, which is to uh, increase uh, to help the virtual appliance security in in the guest. So we are saying, if you have a hardware IOMMU that for the IO accessing, you are no longer used directly used the physical drives. You have the uh, you, you can use the IO virtual drives, and but in the guest, in the guest, so uh, you you don't have a uh, IOMMU hardware in your guest. And but DBDK is still work, uh, running in the in the uh, in the user space. So how to protect your uh, DBDK running in the guest and uh, being uh, uh, run the guest and which will won't break your kernel memories. That is the key point to have this. So uh, virtual IOMU essentially is your emulated uh, emulated device by QMU. So QMU is going to support and and. The, it's going to uh, it, it, it support that way, so you can uh, have a VM. So in that sandbox, you can have virtual CPU, virtual MMU, that you can have the virtual IO MMU. So the, the, um, there's uh, there's patches in the QMU to allow that the, your virtual device ac uh, do the uh, to to access the memory, which has to go through the virtual MMU for the IO virtual device to to. Uh, um, to I will address to get through physical address translation. So, uh, but in, in the in, in both Vho side and uh, in, uh, in Vho side that is not ready yet. So the idea is here. So n not only to have the Vho net in the kernel side to support the uh, uh, what I MMU, but also in DBDK side to support that. So. Uh, in, in 1708, that we uh, we will have one feature that to allows uh, the vhost user library to uh, to request the io io virtual uh, address uh, to uh, to our host virtual address translation uh, provided by QMU, which is our IOTLB lookup. And the uh, in uh, the in remind in my. Um, if we consider this feature that you, you will have uh, more uh, security protection, uh, but you will lose some uh, performance in by using that feature because you need to do the address translation request to the QMU and back forward. So if, if you're, um, but the, one of the benefits is that today you have the memory table uh, from the guest that all, uh, all maintained in their, in, in their backend side. 
you do the memory table lookup uh, anyway in, in backend side. But in this way that you, you just uh, have the request to the Cumulus side and uh, hold the cache, the table cache in the, in the uh, backend user, uh, library side. So that reduced the number of uh, shared memory uh, address translation table there. But the uh, drawback is still being the uh, overhead by the uh, uh, reader requester overhead so that you won't hit uh, a very good performance by doing this. Yeah, what's the next? Um, we, are going, we are seeing that the biggest gap for uh, pushing water I.O. as the uh, interface for NFE is the uh, performance, actually is the throughput. So if we, ca we compare with the water I.O. performance uh, in just a north uh PVP case with the SRV, we, you will see a, a, a very um, big gaps of, uh, compared with in the SRV. Uh, what's the reason for that? So let's see. The, uh, the traffic flow by a PVP NASA's way. So here is our, here's the cache line. So uh, if we're looking at the small packet, actually you just have our single cache line, 64 bytes. And if you are going, uh, you have a packet and go to your backend first and then go to your VM, what's the traffic flow? So the packet will go to your uh, CPU, which uh, handle the VHOS code. So the, the, the cache line will go to the uh, layer three, layer two, layer one for that core. And then the vertical side will decode that packet. So the cache line will go to the core for vertical. So if we look at this traffic level, they are have, uh, essentially have uh, this uh, uh, cost for that. So if we look at the core zero, the cost comes from first one is the cycle spending on handle the PMD. Uh, the second one is the memory copy from the uh, from the memory for that PMD physical uh, device PMD to our uh, V ring. The third one is uh, you will enqueue the packet to to the to the volatile. So that's the ma three major costs. And the one additional is the core to core spending. So you have a core, uh, you have a cache line in your local core, but if you are going to uh, read or write that uh, cache line, you will ha have the overhead for that core to core overhead. And the, in the right side, in the right side, uh, I, I put the um, uh, circle, uh, the, the cycles per packet, the per, uh, 64 bytes per cache line there. So what I'm going to say is, okay, w where we have today, Sorry, uh, sorry. Before going to, uh, before looking at the right side, let's see if we can uh, have the packet directly co goes to the uh, what I O core. So, so your pipeline only has one core. Then the uh, the, the overhead comes up to the uh, the the cycles for that what I PMD, and you you won't hit the uh, core to core uh, overhead. You will you won't have the uh, two uh, PMD uh, cycles, uh, one uh, which spanning on the host side and also the uh, other side. Okay, then we move to the right side. The right side of that. Uh, so um, in different uh, uh, in different uh, uh, rates, uh, the the network rates, uh, forty gig, twenty five, and ten. So if you have you have a fixed a frequency CPU, uh, what's the cycle allows you to do packet? That is the uh, diagram shows. So if we taking the uh, 2.6, uh, 2.3 frequency, that actually for 10, 10 gig uh, bandwidth, uh, the uh, cycles is 115 cycles allows you to do our uh, uh, packet IO if you are going to if you can hit the line rate. And what we are now for for uh, what I/O. So we know that for the PVP case, the most significant overhead is not on the front end, not on the what I side, but on the on the VHO side. So the VHO side, the uh, the the uh, cycle spanning is is there, uh, very uh, on the most right side. So that that's the one. 
how we can reduce the cycles and pull in the cycles to, to the left. So the, the, the ways that there, one is to, to optimize the memory copy, which is, I said, in, in, the, in the VHO side, in the backend side, uh, that's the uh, contribution cycles from memory copy and the ring manipulation. So, uh, of course, you, you can if you can use the less cycles on the ring manipulation, you will get a better performance there. And another significant piece is the ring layout. So, if you keep the existing ring layout, there's a one descriptor ring and a two indirect rings. That that is, uh, you, you will have the additional cache access. Which, is, uh, which means that more cycles will spinning on that. So that's the three, uh, 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 three points that will can uh, improve, the, uh, improve the performance and reduce cycles for that. And there, there's another line, which is the, which the yellow. What, what that is, um, that is the cycle spanning for, for uh, core to core access. So if you have a cache line in the core zero, and uh, you are going to write it on the core one, and that's the overhead. So the overhead actually is about 100, more than 100 cycles. So that is being part of the uh, number one cost. So if we uh, get rid of or reduce the cycles for that way, for that uh, yellow line, and pulling that to the right, uh, left side, we, you will also get the better uh, cycles for, for what I handling. So how to do that? That is stu is stu I list her, uh, also list her three ways. One is you are doing prefetch. So um, the, uh, people will say that if you, we are doing batching that you, you can hide the latency from call to call. That's right. But if we're looking at the Voltai case, uh, you, you can batch in the descriptor, you can batch in the index but it's very hard to batch in the packet buffer because they are scattered, uh, located in different memory. And uh, um, that, uh, that um, buffer addresses is, is, uh, is not uh, physical continue, contiguous. So you perfection one buffer for the packet, but you, will, you won't automatically perfect the others. So it's need to do a little bit um, more hard work to do the right a perfect position in your code. And another, uh, the second approach is that zero copy. That we, we are saying if you can, you, you, you always had to have your packets go to one core and uh, tr transit from one core to another, that you will hit the core to core overhead. So if you are going the zero copy way, so you don't touch your packets in the first core, in your backend. You always touch that in the second core, that you will get benefits. Yeah, but today we are not going to say that too much, that is software optimization. So we, we are going to say another approach is using the Voltio Direct I.O., which is the hardware put your packet directly to your virtual device, and uh, um, you, you are no longer hit the core to core, you just have the single PMD working on that ring, that's the things we are going to talk. So the, in the next two slices, I will go through to the ring layouts uh, impact and the, what we are, we are doing, and also the, what I will direct to the I.O. Um, yeah, that's the next, so ring layout. We have ring layouts evolution discussion in the community for quite a few months. That, that is a one, uh, one one spec. That is our new ring layout, layout, which is no longer compatible with the previous one. So um, you, uh, you, you'll have single distributor ring, directly distributor ring, and no longer has the three rings, and another is indirect ring. So that's a big impact, big improvement. That we, we have the experimental prototype in DBDK, so he, uh, there's a link there, you can get the code and run that code. And essentially, you, you, can, you can do any optimization and put your idea in based on that code to prove your ideas works and have better performance. And then you, you can go back, uh, send back to the community. Um, we, uh, uh, Intel DBDK team has well, uh, in, uh, spent the next few uh, months that working on the software optimization based on that ring layout. And we will, uh, once we can find the good approach, we are proposed to the community and the feedback to the 
uh, op uh, open source code into a community. And uh, if we, uh, it, it's quite hard that you can have their uh, IPCs and also the CPU uh, cycles, uh, micro benchmark, and then put in a number here because it depends on different uh, implementation, software implementation. Actually, that is quite different. But we, we uh, here uh, I put here is on the uh, bus utilization perspective and how the new spec will be better than the old one. So if we, um, yeah, the two picture one is by the uh, throughput, another is pack per second. So the, the yellow one is the older spec that you access the distributing, you access the uh, indirectly available ring and then to uh, get the distributor and then to get a packet. So you will have a few uh, 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 attached, uh, sorry, uh, uh, you have a few access for the cache. But in the new one, that as you ha just have a single ring, that reduce the cache access. So you also reduce the uh, bus uh, utilization if you put the ring and talk with the hardware. So that's an improvement. So that that is not not small one. And then, why we do the estimation on the bus level is we we are trying to. Uh, to allow the hardware uh, access or manipulation the ring directly. So we are saying in the power virtualization side, that is good. You have a software, uh, uh, you have a uh, you have a hardware independent volatile, which is purely software, not depend on any hardware. That is good, and uh, but you will hit the uh, core to core overhead. You will hit the scalability issue on the backend side. So if you are going to increase your performance, the only way is to add more core on the backend side. And how's doing that in different way? So that we are, that's what we are doing to try to allow hardware to directly I.O. Uh, to do the without direct I.O. So to do that is have different approach. The straightforward one is the left one. So you, you have a hardware volatile device and then pass through the whole device to the guest. In that way, that you remap the config space device, config space, and bar to the guest. In that way, that ask the hardware has to be exactly the same as the spec defined. So you have to be the exact volatile device. Um, that is good on performance, so you can have a native perform hardware performance. And uh, but the things comes to be different and comes to be hard is, so you, you have different volatile spec. So 0.95, 1.0, and there you will have 1.1 soon. But that device config space is a slightly different. If you are going to make a hardware volatile that ask you to support a multi version spec, that is resource consumption. So that is one point and what about doing that in a slightly different way? That is the next picture. So what about keeping the volatile device emulated by QMU? So you still have a per virtualization mode, you have a fully device emulated by the QMU. And are you keeping our backend, which is the vHoster, vHoster user or vHostNet, that is backend. But in the backend side, uh, basically, uh, before, uh, previously you have our software data pass. But what about only offload the data pass to the hardware? So the hardware only accelerates your data pass. Okay, that comes to be the next, uh, the second picture, which is we only remap, remap the uh, um, PC, uh, remap the DMA, remap the interrupter, uh, map the uh, kick, the doorbell, uh, to the guest. So for the whole device level, so for either the device emulation, the config space map, the CSR, they are or keeping doing that in QMU. And uh, you, you keep the vhost protocols with backend, and backend gets all the contacts from the guest. And that context can be configured to the hardware. And then you no longer ask your hardware to be exactly the same with the VoDI device. You can have your own config space format, your own uh, device ID, that doesn't really matter. The only need to do is the data pass. So if your uh, hardware data pass can access that ring, which is a shared memory, you can DMA it, you can do the uh, uh, same approach based on that ring, that, that works. 
So, um, so DBDK will go into support both. So no matter um, uh, vendor going to provide and using what I or hardware device or just for, uh, have their data pass acceleration and uh, keeping using their uh, emulated device, DBDK will go into support both. And uh, the key objective to have their direct IO is, uh, is that it has to follow spec. So we need to, uh, um, we, we want to go into create new devices, new uh, type of uh, feature, new uh, logic for the ring handling that is fully spec basis. And uh, um, we're going to uh, hope to have a SRV-like performance. So once we can hit that level of performance that what our uh, ring layout can go to the NFE use case. So, the, um, but having this two, uh, we need to consider another two key, uh, key point. One is your stock VMs won't be changed. So if you have a what I device today, that if you even you have a hardware acceleration, you you hope that that stock VMs can be running on top of new hardware. So that's the aim. Another one is the we 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 can't uh, give up the benefits for what I which is the live migration support. So um, so in the second case, in the second picture that we we are going to. Um, support line migration as well. So uh, the time time frame is that the prototype for uh, for both is will be um, uh, actually the prototype is almost finished. That we are preparing the RFC patch in the in, in the end of this year's release really seventeen eleven. So that's uh, and asking for the community feedback um, during the time. Yeah, that's the update on the direct I/O. Okay, the last last page, last page uh, takeaway. So, what we are talking about today in, in my session? First one is um, DBDK uh, IO virtualization. The packet IO virtualization is getting ready uh, either for VM and the container. We, uh, you, you can run DBDK in either of the way. Yeah. So the second one is we are what we are doing our SRV side. We are uh, trying. Uh, we are do a few things and to help to improve the usability and to enhance the usability. And on the hardware side, the NIC side. So Intel is going to have our AVF device, which is our, using a single VF driver to address the current and the future NICs uh, provided by Intel. And on the virtual side, we are saying uh, to leverage VHost user and not only just a uh, narrow specific, but also to ex expand to support storage and crypto. And there, on the uh, performance side for the virtual I.O., and the, we, we will close work with the community on the new ring layout and the, do the software optimization based on the new ring layout. And then also, um, we, we are doing the uh, research and the prototype on using the hardware acceleration to, for the power virtualized device. And so we, we have the hardware backend to support the IO, so make it as our uh, single root IV like performers. Yeah. Okay, so much for my talk today. Any questions? Okay. Okay, anyway, that you, you can talk with me offline in, the, in, in today's uh, uh, break time. Anyway, okay, thank you. <laughs>